Over the next hour, we'll have three talks focused on the effective altruism movement. To begin, it's my pleasure to introduce Tara McCauley. She is the COO of the Center for Effective Altruism, where she leads the community and movement building teams. Previously, she studied health economics and worked as a pharmacist in Australia, where she worked on health systems, data analytics, and developed efficiency improvements that saved millions of dollars and many lives. She has also been with the Red Cross in Bhutan, where she worked to redesign oncology care. Today, she will talk to us about the effective altruism ecosystem. Please welcome Tara McCauley. Today, I want to talk about the ecosystem of EA and how you can identify allies and find the niche within the community that best suits your skills and expertise and the things that you care about most. So in the beginning, in 2013, the first EA Global, this was the EA community, 60 people. You know, a few of them couldn't really make it, there some others spread around the world, but this is basically it. And then this happened. So this EA has been growing. This graph shows giving what we can members, but if you look at anything, any metric, it'll show the same kind of thing. We, we've grown so much, and at, through doing that, we've been able to achieve a lot more. And as we continue to grow, the thing that I think we'll need to keep in mind is that what we care about is not how many effective altruists there are. The thing that we care about most is how much good is done. And what is different about this is it doesn't matter if we're the ones who do it. If there is a scientist or someone else out there who develops a novel technology that we can then use to do good, if they create an organization and scale it up, it doesn't matter. We don't care about how many people out there identify as effective altruists. We care about the amount of good that we see in the world. And we have all these discussions in the EA community of, often about whether EA is sort of talent constrained, whether EA is funding constraints. And I think continuing to grow can solve all of these problems. We can add more funders, we can add more skilled individuals, and from there we can grow. But when we grow, when we add lots of different types of people, we'll see increasing fragmentation. When it's a, EA is becoming not just cause neutral, but means neutral as well. And we're seeing lots of new ways of doing good. Effective altruism has sort of, as it's grown, we've also scaled our impact. But, uh, you know, we've changed what the discussion about doing good. So in the early days, we talked about, you know, existential risk being this weird niche idea. But recently, it was discussed on panels at the UN. And we tried to identify the very best charities, but now we're founding them and building them from the ground up. We talked about how to decide who to vote for, but now we're influencing governments directly. And I think as the community continues to grow, we'll start to see some coordination challenges here. We'll start to see difficulties in identifying who our core allies are and how to fit them into this community, where to find out people that we can cooperate with, even if they don't buy into everything that we care about there's still something meaningful that they can contribute. So I view effective altruism as a commitment to these three core values. Uh, you know, two of them are obvious in the name. It, obviously, effective altruism is, is altruism, and that means a commitment to doing good, and not just good, but doing the most good. It also means the use of evidence and reason. We need, given that we have limited resources, we need to figure out how to do the most good with what we've got and prioritize. But the thing that is missing from this conversation is action. Effective altruism, to me, means a commitment to take action on the basis of these beliefs, to figure out, to you know, care about the world, figure out how to make a difference, and then actually go there and do it. And this is where we see a lot of diversity in, effect in EAs. You know, we have a lot of cause areas that we talk about endlessly, but we're also seeing a lot of interesting new ways to take action. And I think these new ways to take action are making it difficult to have conversations in the, in the EA community. When you introduce yourself, uh, you know, how many of you have this, this strange moment where you go up to someone and then you feel like you're standing at, at airport security or something and someone's going to interrogate you and they say, you know, can I, can I see your EA credentials? What is it that you're contributing to this movement? Where, where do you fit in? What cause areas do you care about? And I think we need to change the discussion about effective altruism and try to find out what is it that holds us together rather than what it is that makes us different. 
So like with any set of values, we can see what fits into this, but it's important to consider what's the opposite as well. Who is it that doesn't share our values? Who can we cooperate with and who, who can we not? And you know, we make lots of jokes all the time about how, well, the opposite of effective altruism is ineffective altruism, is people who are naively trying to do good and neglecting evidence. But from this diagram, we can see that those people are creating a lot of good. They you know, have two of our core values, altruism and action, and then all we need to do is give them the evidence to help them figure out how to achieve their goals in an even better way. And we'll see things like this all of the time. So the opposite of effective altruism is an ineffective altruism. These days, even Charity Navigator has changed their site. They're no longer talking about the overhead ratio. They're trying to debunk that myth. So even them, we can get on board. The opposite of effective altruism is apathy. Looking at the world and you know, not caring, not, not doing anything about it. It's arrogance, seeing new evidence, new ideas, seeing how we can actually do so much good, and thinking that you know, we need better evidence, we need more data, we can't, we can't do anything, or like this, this isn't good enough. And it's helplessness, sort of seeing, like, seeing all the problems in the world, seeing how and seeing that there is evidence that shows us what we can do, and throwing up our hands and saying, like, this is all too hard, nothing I do ever works, and like, I, I'm never going to get anywhere. So I think we can use these three values and anti-values to change how we talk about what it means to be an effective altruist. So we can create this community that thrives on coordination. We just need to figure out who shares our values and who doesn't, and how we can cooperate with those who don't share our values, because many of them are still producing good as well. And it, I think these are some of the groups that fit in here. So we, we all, like, like I mentioned, the volunte volunteers and people who are naively trying to go do good without evidence. I think we'll also see contributions from other members as well, from entrepreneurs who have a lot of lessons about taking action and using evidence in order to build organizations. We can apply their lessons to the work that we do in doing good. And they're, they're already on board with two of our values. We just need to give them the third. On the outside of this, there are lots of groups who share just one of these three values. And these people can provide value as well. Like I gave the example of a scientist who develops a novel vaccine or some other scalable intervention that will help us do more good. We don't care about whether that person is an effective altruist. We care that they developed this new technology that we can use. So EA is not just choosing the cause that you care the most about. It's choosing the most effective means to take action. And this is particularly difficult to coordinate based on, because when you, know, you introduce yourself to someone at the conference, there's often this, this awkward moment when you're like, oh, what do you do? And you say, I'm a data analyst. And then you think, OK, well, like, what are you working on? And how, how is that EA? Are, are you a donor? Are you something else? So I think we need to start having different conversations about the actions that effective altruists take and how we can better contribute to the community. So, I'd like to propose, like, I'm going to go through some different ways that I think EAs can contribute to the community and how we all get, we are attracted to this community because we share these same core values, the same set of three things. So first step is identify our allies. You know, identify, does this person I'm talking to share these three core values? Or which of them do they, which of them do they share and which of them is sort of, you know, not really their cup of tea? And then think about what role do you play, what role do they play, and how can you cooperate together to create more value. So we probably all know these are some of the main ways, some of the main actions that effective altruists take. There's a lot of people who are out there uh, acting as ambassadors for EA, talking about it to their friends, people who are building organizations. And there are lots of people who are students who haven't yet figured out what they're going to do long term. And they're focusing on skilling up so they can contribute more over the future. So I want each of you to think about what actions you take that make you an effective altruist. It's not enough just to commit to the ideas and the beliefs, to look at the evidence. What, what does being an EA mean to you? So I'm going to give you some roles, some labels, and I think it would be fun to play around with this. So I think these are some of the roles that EAs play, some ways that they can contribute a lot of value to the network. And uh, once they've sort of signed on to the three core values. So I think the first one that we've seen is these uh, people who act as ambassadors. So a lot of people 
talk to talk to their friends about effective altruism and engage with newcomers. And they're the people who are out there eager to explain all the most basic ideas again and again and again, because that's how we're going to grow the movement and grow our impact. And they also work within organizations, advocating for EA ideas within fringe sort of people on the periphery of EA, NGOs, government, and large corporations. And I think a key part of being an ambassador is to really live the values. So a lot of ambassadors take some of the actions that the other EAs do as well. They donate, they change their diet or some of the other behaviors to match the thing that they care about the most. The next role that we're all familiar with is a patron. So a lot of people contribute resources to the EA movement. They're donors, people earning to give. And these people are incredibly valuable because they, have, they seek out the very best giving opportunities. They seek to give more and give more effectively. We're both probably, we're all very familiar with the first two types, you know, spreading effective altruism and donating. But I think there are some other important ones that we sometimes neglect. The explorer. So some effective altruists contribute to the community by developing new intellectual content, new ideas that help inform how we do good and how we can scale up existing interventions. They help us answer the big questions about how to do good effectively. And making just a tiny breakthrough can increase the amount of good that we as an entire community can do. So a lot of people ask me, and they say, OK, I like write this blog, and I publish a lot of ideas about EA on the internet. Is that contributing to the community? And I, I say, yes, it is. Like, we, we need people out there who are helping us inform the decision about EA and helping us think about these difficult questions and apply their thoughts to it. <sighs> Obviously, if we develop lots of new in insights, it's not going to mean anything unless we can translate them into action. So this is the role that I think is probably the most neglected within the EA community, people who are builders, people who actually go out there, see evidence, see a problem in the world, see that a solution has been created, and bring those two together to build something really great. So there are some EAs who are out there trying to found new organizations, scale them up, grow them, or even work within an existing structure to make it more effective. And we need more of these people, people who are focused on taking action, doing more. Also. There are people who are students, those who haven't yet quite found their niche, or people who know exactly what they want to do in the long term, but still need more training. And as EA grows, as we branch out into lots of new cause areas and try doing many different things, particularly as we branch out into biology and uh, government, some of these tracks require many years of training. So it's OK to be still learning. It's OK to be a student and to focus on the real long-term game. Because without people who are in training, we'll never be able to achieve some of these really large things that require a lot more skills. So this is what I think a basic categorization of EA actions is. Can you see where you might fit in? I think that most of us start up here in the initiate. When we first hear about effective altruism, we need to figure out where we fit in, identify collaborators and allies, and see who we can cooperate with. And then we need to pick, pick an action pick the main way that we're going to contribute. And these actions apply to all cause areas. These, these are the means. So we can combine those in order to do more good and to work together. And you'll see that you know, any one of them cannot solve all of the problems that we want to solve in effective altruism. We'll need people in all of these different classes. And we'll need to make sure that these roles are balanced over time as we grow. So because I'm a data nerd, I tried to categorize all of you. So I went through all the EA global applications and sort of tried putting people into these categories. And this is the split that I came up with. You can come up to me later if you disagree with your classification, or I can tell you what I thought you were as well. But when we start doing something like this, it can inform discussions we have about whether or not more EAs should be earning to give. You know, Right now, you can see that it's about 12% of EAs are earning to give according to their EA Global application. And a lot of them are focusing on building new institutions. With, it, with this kind of information about how people contribute, we can have more meaningful discussions about how individuals can be successfully added to this network so that we can increase in value as we get more and more people. We can talk about how, you know, whether we need more people earning to give, more people developing new content, or more people training up for the future. So next time, you meet someone who's new to effective altruism, or you meet someone out at the conference, I want you to first figure out, do they share your values? 
Do they care about altruism? Do they care about effectiveness? Are they taking action? And once you know these three, what actions are they taking? How are they, how are they trying to do good in the world? Through donating, through using their, using their time, through talking about EA and spreading the ideas, or through developing new ideas. And if you meet someone who's just encountered effective altruism, maybe you can help them figure out their path. You can help them find the best action that they can take given their skills and experience, and help them learn more. And with this kind of framework for talking about the roles that different EAs play in the community, we can create better connections as well. And we can stop this thing where EA becomes like airport security, where you get asked for your credentials first before seeing how we can collaborate and uh, work together better in the future. Thank you.